how long how long between the the first competition and Las Vegas? How how what was the time frame between those two competitions? It was just, uh, it was uh, they were back to back. <clears throat> so Mexico was one weekend, and Las Vegas was the following weekend. <laughs> yeah. I take yeah. my hat off to you for that effort, Maestro. I had to come out with a, a new routine. Um, you know, and part of that, I think, is, um, is because in Mexico, because sometimes with competitions, they look for different things. Uh -huh. And, um, yeah, and just with that whole kind of, like what I was saying before about me being about quality, quality over quantity, yep. what I needed to bring more quantity in Mexico. Mm -hmm. Because that's what they were all about, you know. Besides the fact that they're great dancers, they're actually very strong dancers. They also, they also, um, you know, had a lot of content in their choreographies. Do you know what I mean? And um, and yeah, and some of the feedback that I got was that, um, you know, that I I have this kind of like. Um, like that who was it i can't remember who it was one of the judges said to me like that my experience and my 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 elegance and my my technique and my time is like second to none mm -hmm. but that, that i just needed more content mm -hmm. um and uh yeah and it's it's actually it was really challenging for me to re-choreograph because as I said, I, I re-choreographed in between the semis and the finals, which was yep. only like, I think, one or two days apart. Yeah. But I re-choreographed about maybe 25% of it. And then in between Mexico and Las Vegas, I, I re-choreographed about 50% of it to 75% of it. But the difficult part was... Um, was going out there and then trying to not be conscious because when you when you perform if you're thinking about your routine you're not going to be present mm -hmm. so if you're in your head you're not going to be with the people mm -hmm. Any way that you can be with the people is if your choreography is already in your body. Ingrained. Yeah. What we call muscle memory, yeah. It's subconscious. So you don't have to think about it. So it was, it was, I really like used every ounce of my experience at that point in time. Mm -hmm. My experience being under pressure, being on stage competing, performing, all my experiences culminated into that one moment where I had to compete for my 10th title in a routine that I had learned two nights before. Like it was, it was really tough. Yeah, it was really, really challenging. And, and I think honestly, like I, I kind of pat myself on the back a little bit because um there's not many people that would be able to handle that kind of um, pressure. How did you feel after winning your 10th title? Because I know this has been like a lifetime ambition for you. This has been a lifetime goal, something you've been yeah. working towards for so many, so many years. And I don't know if people fully appreciate what goes into winning a world title, like a, like a world title at the highest calibre. And like all of the, the flights, the hotels, the hours of rehearsal, the traveling, the time differences, the jet lag, re-choreographing routines in between events. How did you feel after you'd achieved your, that goal? Yeah, it's, it's funny because, um, you know, it's like, it's uh, obviously there was a feeling of celebration mixed with relief mm -hmm. mixed with <laughs> yeah mixed with uh, <laughs> what next yeah 
Like what next? What now? Yeah, like honestly. Uh, actually, they they say that um, like astronauts when they get back from missions, mm -hmm. um, sometimes they suffer like forms of depression because you know they experience something so phenomenal and mm -hmm. you know ordinary, and then they go back to everyday life. Yeah, yeah, and it's like what next? It's like where do I go now? I've been to the moon. Like, I, what, 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 how do I top that? <laughs> um, so, yeah, so there is that kind of feeling of what next for me. One thing and, that, I, that you touched you know, on earlier. What's that? One thing that you touched on earlier was that you have so many students coming to you now on a more international platform, but traditionally more local people, people that are based in Sydney, You've got so many people coming to you for, to to learn from you based off your experience and and your style and how you're doing things. There's there's probably not many people in the Australian scene that are at a, quite a high level that haven't in some way learned from you personally. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. Um, there's a, a lot of, I mean, I've been in the scene for over twenty years now. Mm -hmm. uh, when I started, salsa was not what it is today. There were no schools. There were no events. Actually, the, when I started, um, yeah, like, like as we spoke about before, there was no uh, social media. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's very, very few people that are around today around back then mm. so i've pretty much been part of you know i've seen everything i've seen the industry grow to what it is today i see people come and go all the time and because i've been around for so long yeah the majority of 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 teachers in the industry today um school directors at one point or another they came through me and they learned through me um yeah so it's, you know, it's but, like you're 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 at the forefront of Australian teaching and artistry. I don't know of any other artists in Australia, based in Australia, that have done as much travelling as you have. Is do you feel like an enormous sense of responsibility because you're essentially fostering the next generation of dancers in Australia? Yeah, well, that's that's what I'd like to sort of move into. Um, is kind of. Um, now creating champions, um, you know, and I really like working with uh, people that are ambitious mm -hmm. and um, yeah, you know, and I, I obviously I have a, a, a lot to be able to pass, a lot of information to pass on, you know, mm -hmm. I've been done that. And that's one thing that I always tell people if they want to, if they want to go anywhere in life, just, find someone that's been there and mm -hmm. how they got there and follow in their footsteps. Um, so, you know, but in terms of like a responsibility, um, I wouldn't say it's like, I feel like it's such a responsibility. I do, one thing that I do wish, um, and it's unfortunate, but I guess any, any kind of artist, well, let's say I'm going to use the word and I'm not referring to myself when I say this, but like, okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to think. Um, like people are usually taken for granted in their hometown. Totally agree. Yeah. That doesn't matter if you're Oliver Panita. It doesn't matter if you're, you know, uh, Hollywood movie stars, like when you're around the corner, then you're around the corner. Like it's, you know, it becomes, you become accessible and therefore you become less in demand. And that's really sad because I have so much to give, but unfortunately, like there's, there is like, 
Um, the element of complacency surrounding it because, because you are so accessible in your own city. Yeah, and it's a shame because there's so many people that I would love to be training and that I would love for them to come to me and say, hey, you know, like, do you know what I mean? Like, I, yeah, um, that's, that's a shame. That's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Not so unfortunate for me, it's unfortunate for them. Mm -hmm. um, but you've you already, know, in some just, ways, you've already fostered the next generation of champions and created champions. Like I speak, I speak very highly of Adia because Adia has been touring and traveling the world, and he won a world title a couple of years back. And he's he's been one of your proteges since he started. And and then Alyssa Chikiri, she was a she's another world champion and consistently competing at the World Championships every year in Salsa and Samba, and she's done exceptionally well, and she credits a lot of her success to your training and your tuition. Chuba, who's been to the Worlds 15 times or something, and he's been second in the world eight or nine of those times. He was third in the world for solos, and he was my mentor. So indirectly, I've sort of been trained by you in some <laughs> ways, not including the workshops and private lessons that I've taken with you over the years. But I feel like you've already achieved that element of your ambition in training the next generation of champions. Yeah, yeah, you could say that. I'm, I'm really grateful to have inspired people, uh, even if it's not, you know, firsthand. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if, yeah, like that's, that's, that's really um, nice to know, but, but I, I, I know like with a lot of people um, that are, you know, in Sydney or even just interstate, like I'm literally around the corner and there's people that fly me around the world to teach them and I'm literally at people's doorsteps. So I wish mm -hmm. more people come to learn from me because I have so much I want to give. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, so... Yeah, but um, you know, I'm I'm really honestly I consider myself very very fortunate, very very lucky because I've worked hard in my life but at the same time I I I you know, I was at the right place at the right time. It's something that I don't think many people get to experience. Mm -hmm. Um I've seen the world like um and uh, and I've met, you know, I've had great, amazing experiences and, and met amazing people. You know, you were mentioning um, some of the artists that absolutely, like, you know, Artie, one of the things I love most about Artie is what I was saying before about having that student mentality. Um, Artie, mm -hmm. for me, is a great example of that because he's always learning, mm -hmm. learning skills and just you know, he used to come to my academy classes and stand next to my students and learn, you know, and, um, and that's really, really admirable for me. Like I have so much respect for artists when they do that, you know. <laughs>